Hello, this is Paul Stockdale from ABCPE, the site where we try and make VCE physical education as easy as ABC. Today I'd like to talk about lactate inflection point, um, a concept in VCE PE that students often find difficult. I always start by telling my students that lip is aerobic. Lip is aerobic. Um, it's aerobic. Uh, what is lip? Lip is aerobic and there's two of the great aerobic athletes in Mo Farah and Iliad Kipchoge. We'll come back to, uh, to Mo shortly. So ELIP is aerobic. In fact, it's the highest intensity where lactate removal and lactate production are balanced. So it's almost our highest aerobic steady state. Beyond that intensity, lactate production exceeds removal and we accumulate lactate, which will lead to fatigue. We talk about lactate, um, we measure lactate, but it's the hydrogen ions that are in equal concentration with lactate in the muscle that will fatigue us. So we only have measuring tools that will measure lactate, but we know that it's hydrogen ions that will cause us to fatigue. And lip for most people occurs at around about 85% heart rate max. You can see there it can be measured uh, against VO2 max. Just know that elites can be up to 90% of heart rate max and still be at lip or their highest aerobic steady state. Uh, the diagram there, the graph there, shows that this person's lip is at 13 kilometers per hour. So once we start working above lip, um, we have a problem. We uh, begin to get increased anaerobic metabolism. Our lactate and hydrogen ions will accumulate, cause us to fatigue, and cause us to exhaust ourselves. Rowing being a fantastic um, example. So can we improve lip? Oh, of course we can. Aerobic training will improve lip. Um, what it does is it will increase the number of mitochondria in the muscle. It will increase oxidative enzymes so that we can oxidize fats at higher intensities. All of these muscular chronic adaptations will lead to a higher lip, which is very, very advantageous for athletes. Speaking of athletes, I'd like to show you a clip about with somebody who has an enormously high lip, um, the great Mo Farah and one of his events, and I'll explain as we go through. So we're going to watch Mo Farah's last 5,000 metre race. He just lost uh, in the World Championships, and this was his final 5,000 metre race. Um, I'll talk about energy systems. I'll talk about lip. 23. These athletes will begin and be in a period of oxygen deficit. The ATP-PPC system will be dominant uh, until PC stores start to deplete, in which case the anaerobic glycolysis system will become dominant. And at about the 400 metre mark, after a, I guess uh, 40 seconds to a minute, the aerobic system will be dominant and a steady state will be reached, somewhere between the minute, minute and a half mark, these remember, are elite athletes. And they'll settle in to a steady state. But Their steady state for 400 metres will be approximately 62 to 64 seconds per lap. We have two 38 minute kilometres to give you an idea of the speed. Have a look at the screen. So most starting to crank up now, moves to the front, wants a little bit of speed. He's not won by very far. The smallest of margins won by big sprint finishes and he's going to attempt to do the same here in the Diamond League final as they approach the bell. And now we get to the bell and watch what these athletes do now. They will begin to increase speed significantly. They will go above their lip. That is, lactate production will exceed lactate removal and lactate is accumulating. But of course, it's their last lap. So they don't really care about fatigue as long as they can make it to the finish line. And he just gets there and wins the final race of a glittering career. Well done, Mo, and well done to the others. 52-second final lap, just showing how far above lip they were. The aerobic system still dominant, but incredibly high anaerobic glycolysis contributions for that last lap. So I hope that clarified it a little bit. Um, with training, lip will shift to the right, which means we're able to sustain a higher aerobic intensity. Um, you can see the diagram here where this person's lip, 
through training has moved from 13 kilometers per hour to 15 kilometers an hour. To give you an idea of Mo's lip, you would be looking at around 22 and a half kilometers per hour, which is really something. All right, I'll give you an opportunity to complete this question. Did you go? Um, hopefully, we're able to see that the only correct response there is that Reese is at steady state because we know that lactate inflection point is aerobic. So when someone is running at their lactate inflection point, they are at their highest aerobic steady state. So there's a summary of what we really need to know about lip. It's the final point where lactate production and removal are balanced. People with higher lips can run at higher aerobic intensity a la Mo Farah compared to someone like myself. This delays anaerobic glycolysis, glycolysis contributions and fatiguing byproduct accumulation. Therefore, you can run faster for longer. Here's an example of a VCAR question in 2016. It's been a while since we've had a lip short answer question. Who knows, maybe this is the year. I'll give you an opportunity. Well, let's use my structure to answer this, the what, why, and how structure. So what's the question asking us? Well, it's given um, that we're, we've improved lip. So why is that um, an advantage for a distance runner? Well, it means they can work at higher aerobic intensities. Therefore, they delay the point where they get increased anaerobic contributions and hydrogen ion accumulation, which causes fatigue. Therefore, they can run faster at faster speeds for longer. How did you go? There's how the state went. Uh, it's fairly well answered, but 31% got zero. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, my name's been Paul Stockdale from ABCPE. Remember, uh, if you need any more resources, videos in particular, please go to our uh, website, www.abcpe.com.au. I'll see you next time. Thank you.